Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 123, so let's get to it. Episode 123 begins in Windon Stadium, where Cynthia and Ash are about to begin their battle. Cynthia makes her way to the battlefield and, on the way, she runs into Deontha, who says that she is cheering for Cynthia. Cynthia says thank you for the support and she says that she will prove that she is worthy of Deontha's hope. Deontha then says that Cynthia will be the one that ends Leon's winning streak. Cynthia says that this is a lot of pressure. Now I love that these two seem to be very close friends which just feels so right and it's cute that Deontha was waiting here so that she could encourage and motivate Cynthia. I do have to say though that it does feel a bit cold that Deontha is clearly on Cynthia's side, since Deontha also knows Ash, but she is basically saying that she is rooting for Ash to lose, which just feels wrong. But I guess that you can really only root for one person and Deontha chose, who is very likely her closest friend of the two candidates, so you can't really blame her. Cynthia then says that she has decided something, which is that she will retire from battling when the Masters Tournament is over. This shocks Deontha. Now the fact that Cynthia plans to retire from battling is not a surprise since this was revealed in the special preview for this battle. I went into detail on what I think about Cynthia's decision in my video on said special preview and on my video talking about who might be the next champion of Sinnoh should Cynthia retire. So I will refrain from sharing my opinions in detail again here. If you would like to hear my full thoughts on the matter, then please check out those videos. There will be links to them in the description below and at the end of this video. But for your convenience, the short version is that I absolutely love Cynthia and I really do not want to see her retire. So the episode then cuts to the other side of the stadium, where Ash gears up for the battle by putting on his Mega Glove, his C-Ring and his Dynamax Band. I love that he puts them on in the order that they were introduced to the games. A nice detail. While Ash does this, his Pokemon look at him with serious expressions. They can definitely feel the tension. Once he is all geared up, Ash turns to his Pokemon and he says, it's time. I am counting on all of you. The Pokemon all show that they are ready to go. Since they are all now prepared, Ash and the Pokemon decide to head out into the battlefield. The episode then cuts to Professor Oak's lab, where Professor Oak, Ash's mother, Ash's old Pokemon and Tracy gather around at the TV so that they can watch the battle. The Pokemon are all eager to cheer for Ash. The episode then cuts back to Windon Stadium where Cynthia and Ash enter the battlefield, and they make their way to their sides of the field where they both get ready to battle. The referee then goes over the regulations for the semi-finals, which are, for the most part, the same regulations used for the first round. There is still no limit on match time or on substituting Pokemon, and trainers are still only allowed a single use of one of the following. Mega Evolution, C-Move, or Dynamax. The only difference with the semi-finals is that battles are 6-on-6 six six instead of 3-on-3. Three three. With the regulations out of the way, the battle finally begins with Cynthia and Ash sending out their first Pokemon at the same time. Cynthia's first Pokemon is Spiritomb, a new Pokemon of hers here in the anime. Ash's first Pokemon is Dragonite. Everyone is surprised to see Spiritomb. Deontha even comments that Cynthia took control of the battlefield by using a Pokemon that no one predicted. Now Ash boldly exclaims that his Dragonite won't lose no matter who Dragonite is up against. Which yeah, is unfortunately not true and a huge exaggeration. So Dragonite begins with Draco Meteor. However, Dragonite is hit with Sucker Punch before it can fire off the Draco Meteor and it falls to the ground. 
Now this is accurate, since Sucker Punch has priority and it hits if the opponent is readying an attack. And the whole point of Sucker Punch is to disrupt the opponent by striking them before they can do anything. Undeterred by the sudden hit and interruption, Dragonite gets back up and it still fires off the Draco Meteor, which rains down on Spiritomb. However, despite taking a shower of meteors head on, Spiritomb is seemingly unharmed. It even laughs maniacally, showing that the Draco Meteor was nothing to it. I have to say that this makes no sense. Draco Meteor is one of the strongest moves, and Spiritomb does not have a resistance to Dragon type moves. But despite this, Spiritomb is somehow perfectly fine after taking such a powerful attack. And Spiritomb did not do anything special, at least not visibly, to defend itself. So basically Draco Meteor did nothing just because. Or rather, because this makes Cynthia and her Pokemon more imposing, while making Ash and his Pokemon seem powerless. Also, I guess that Dragonite really cannot catch a break. I do have to say though that I love how Spiritomb dissipates the smoke by spinning. It looks like a fan. So Dragonite then uses Dragon Claw, however, Spiritomb uses Hypnosis, which puts Dragonite to sleep. Meaning that just like before, Dragonite is interrupted before it can actually attack. Spiritomb then uses Dream Eater, which is honestly horrifying. Now I love that Cynthia calls for Dream Eater in quite an innocent manner gently pointing her finger like she is just playing around. This is in stark contrast to the ruthless thing she is calling for. This contrast helps to illustrate just how terrifying of an opponent Cynthia is, and how easily she has taken control of the battle. Also, since Dream Eater restores HP to the user, Spiritomb is now likely at full HP, since it clearly took very little damage from Draco Meteor. Spiritomb then uses Dream Eater again, which allows it to whittle down Dragonite's vitality even more. Ash and Pikachu try their best to get the Dragonite to wake up, but it's no use. Spiritomb then uses Dream Eater once more. This third Dream Eater is enough to knock out Dragonite. Now I have to say that this angers me because Dragonite is defeated way too easily, way too fast and without doing anything since both of its attacks were interrupted and Draco Meteor apparently did nothing. And even if it did something, Dream Eater makes it meaningless anyways. Dragonite is also taken down while it's asleep, meaning that Dragonite could not even go down fighting. It was just defeated while it was unable to fight back. All of this would be bad enough, but what makes matters worse is that this is Dragonite's third loss in a row. After being the powerhouse of Ash's team in the first half of Pokemon Journeys, Dragonite is now the punching bag of the team, which is just awful. Oh, how the great have fallen. Also, this is now Dragonite's worst battle and performance to date, since at least the previous times that it lost, it did so after at least doing some damage. And after at least clashing with its opponent repeatedly. While these losses were still not cool, at least they felt fair. Also, I know that Dream Eater is a powerful move, and that Dragonite took three of them. I also understand that Dragonite was likely taken out like this to show just how powerful Cynthia is. But come on, why not have the Hypnosis slash Dream Eater combo happen after Dragonite has had a chance to battle for a while, and after Dragonite has done some actual damage to Spiritomb. This way, Dragonite at least goes down after putting up a good battle, and after doing something. This way, it does not feel that Dragonite was just done dirty, and it would be easier to accept that Dragonite was defeated because it at least had a chance to do something. Also, this would have showcased Cynthia's power even better, because despite Dragonite's best efforts and despite Dragonite putting up a good fight, it was still brought down in the end. Its best was not enough against Cynthia, and its best was also rendered meaningless and useless 
by Dream Eater, because Spiritum would have recovered all the damage it took. This would have made the despair of losing Dragonite even worse, which would have enhanced the general feeling of dread conveyed in this episode. So yeah, I really hate what happens to Dragonite here, and I think that there was a much better way to handle this part of the battle, which would have enhanced not only the battle overall, but also Dragonite's reputation. Also, I have been hoping that Dragonite would get its redemption at some point, but since there is likely only one more battle left in this series, things are not looking good for Dragonite. Finally, before I move on, I want to mention that Dragonite fought and lost against Paul's Garchomp. I was hoping that this would translate into having Dragonite do something great against Cynthia's Garchomp, but I guess that I was expecting too much. Dragonite's battle against Paul's Garchomp has been useless thus far, and it likely will remain this way. So Ash is shocked because Dragonite was defeated while Ash's old Pokemon are all sad. Now Go says in a depressing tone that the Dragonite barely did anything. This illustrates what I said earlier, that the Dragonite was sacrificed to show just how strong Cynthia is. After withdrawing Dragonite, Ash apologizes to it, and he says that he won't make the same mistake again. Ash then gets ready to send out his next Pokemon and, surprisingly, Cynthia withdraws Spiritomb. Cynthia sends out Rose Ray next, while Ash sends out Gengar next. Now Ash says that this is how Cynthia, the champion of Sinnoh, battles. I love that Cynthia smiles like, yeah, that's right. So Rose Ray begins with Bullet Seed, Gengar counters with Shadow Ball. While Gengar is pummeled by the Bullet Seed, its resistance to Grass-type moves allows it to easily shrug off the damage. And it fires off the Shadow Ball, which ends up being pretty much ineffective, since Rose Raid intercepts it with Bullet Seed. And Rose Raid still stands strong. I love that Gengar then does its classic troll face to show that the Bullet Seed really was nothing to it. I also love that when she called for Bullet Seed, Cynthia once again spoke innocently while gently or playfully pointing with her finger. Again, it's like she is just playing around. She is essentially toying with Ash, which shows how much stronger and confident she is. Also, Cynthia moving and pointing with her finger like this makes it seem like she is conducting a symphony one that sings of Ash's defeat, and Ash is helplessly dancing to this symphony. He is literally dancing in the palm of Cynthia's hand. I am definitely a fan of how they are portraying Cynthia's power, personality, and demeanor with such simple gestures and in such subtle ways. So Rose Raid uses Leaf Storm, while Gengar uses Willow Wisp. Both moves clash and they go through each other. As a result, Rose Raid is hit and burned by the Will-O-Wisp, while Gengar takes another not very effective hit. Since Rose Raid was crippled by the burn, Cynthia chooses to withdraw Rose Raid. This shows that Cynthia refuses to let Ash get any advantage. I love that this shocks Gengar very much. It's like, what? That's allowed? That is not fair, I just took the advantage. While Cynthia decides to switch Pokemon, Ash chooses to continue with Gengar, who is determined to keep battling. Cynthia then sends out Spiritomb again. Ash confidently exclaims that they are not falling for Hypnosis and Dream Eater again. Gengar begins with Dazzling Gleam, but like before, Spiritomb uses Sucker Punch to interrupt its opponent. However, before falling to the ground, Gengar still fires off the Dazzling Gleam, which lands a direct hit, so Spiritomb is hit with the only type of move that it is weak to, which finally makes Spiritomb show pain. However, Spiritomb is not the only one that took a super effective hit. Unlike Dragonite, Gengar is weak to Sucker Punch, so the surprise attack took a lot more out of Gengar, who struggles to get back up. Now the episode cuts to commercials here, and when the episode resumes, they infuriatingly rewind the episode back 
to when Cynthia once again sends out Spirit Doom. So 30 seconds of the episode are rehashed. This triggers me to no end. I hate when this happens in any anime, because it is just a waste of time. I get that for those watching in Japan, this might not be so bad, because they actually get commercials. But for us outside of Japan, the commercial break and subsequent recap of what happened just before the break is unnecessary. It is just a waste of time and this angers me more here, because every other anime that I have seen do this has the decency to only recap a few seconds. But here, they recap 30 seconds, which is just way too much and it's honestly lazy. This is compounded by the fact that this arc has not exactly been well paced, and it has been riddled with things that waste time. So why waste even more time like this? This battle is meant to run for 3 episodes, so I guess that since they have plenty of time, they decided that it would be okay to pad this episode. Because why not, right? They have less to do this way. I would be more accepting of this if the time they did not waste was put to some very good use. But unfortunately, this is not really the case. Also, these 30 seconds could have been given to Dragonite vs. Spiritum, but they opted to misuse these 30 seconds instead, which is just awful. So Gengar and Spiritum are both down due to all the damage they took. Spiritum does manage to get back up without too much trouble, and it even laughs maniacally, showing that it shrugged off the damage. Gengar meanwhile has more trouble standing back up but it is still able to get back up, much to Ash's joy and much to my joy as well. Gengar then waves at Ash like, yeah bro, I got this. However, Gengar soon falls over and it is knocked out, much to my dismay. Like with Dragonite, I hate that Gengar was taken out so easily and so quickly. However, unlike Dragonite, Gengar actually did something. It burned Rose Raid and it dealt some good damage to Spiritomb. So while I still hate the fact that Gengar was not able to do that much and that it was defeated so fast, I am more willing to accept Gengar's loss than Dragonite's loss, especially since Gengar has been doing really well lately, unlike Dragonite. Also, I know it's a classic trope for this anime, but I really hate that they give us false hope that a Pokemon will be able to keep battling after struggling to stand back up after enduring a powerful attack, only to then have them fall over and be knocked out anyways. Like why play with our emotions like this especially when we are actively rooting for the Pokemon in question. Also they did this with Dracovish as well when Ash battled the Steven. Why reuse this trope again so soon? After withdrawing Gengar, Ash says that he is going to make the most of Gengar's efforts. Cynthia then withdraws Spiritomb, much to Ash's surprise. Cynthia really wants to keep up the pressure and she does not want to let Ash settle into any sort of rhythm. Cynthia then sends out Togekiss, another new Pokemon for her in the anime. Also fun fact, this is the only Togekiss that has appeared in the main series besides Don's Togekiss. So, Ash sends out Pikachu next. Perhaps because Pikachu has the type advantage over Togekiss or perhaps, like Cynthia soon says in her mind, Ash might be hoping to turn the tide of the battle by using his greatest partner. Now I love that Togekiss flies up, which gives it some more altitude over Pikachu and, in response to this, Pikachu stands up so that he can be higher up to compensate, showing that Pikachu refuses to lose even here. So Pikachu begins with Thunderbolt, but Togekiss easily avoids the Thunderbolts even when Pikachu uses Thunderbolt continuously. Togekiss then uses Air Slash which smacks Pikachu around. Togekiss then uses Send Headbutt. Pikachu tries to counter with Electro Web, but Pikachu is unable to move and he takes a direct hit from Send Headbutt. Now the reason why Pikachu was unable to move is that he flinched due to Air Slash, which has a chance to flinch the opponent. Diantha then reveals that Cynthia's Togekiss has Serene Grace as its ability. Serene Grace increases the chance 
that the additional effect of a move will be triggered. Because of Serene Grace, Air Slash had a higher chance of causing the opponent to flinch. I love when moves and abilities work together like this in the anime. Before Pikachu can even recover from the Zen headbutt, Cynthia withdraws Togekiss. So once again, Cynthia chooses to switch Pokémon. Cynthia then sends out Gastrodon, a Ground-type Pokémon. Which is bad news for Pikachu, since not only is he weak to Ground-type moves, but Gastrodon is also immune to Electric-type moves. So Pikachu can only use Quick Attack and Iron Tail. Go mentions that Cynthia knows Ash well. She knows that Ash will not switch Pokémon, so she plans to take Pikachu out. This explains why she sent out Gastrodon who has the type advantage over Pikachu and this also shows that again, Cynthia aims to completely overwhelm Ash. So Gastrodon begins with Earth Power, but Pikachu avoids the attack by jumping. Cynthia exclaims here as expected, meaning that she knew that Pikachu would not be so easy to defeat. Gastrodon then uses Stone Edge, while Pikachu uses Iron Tail. Pikachu shatters the frontmost rock and he then smacks the two pieces of rock in order to throw them towards Gastrodon who ends up catching and being hit by the rocks. Pikachu then uses Quick Attack which somehow defeats Gastrodon, which is just utterly ridiculous. Like seriously? This is all it took to defeat Gastrodon? Two thrown rocks plus a Quick Attack? No way! This is just unbelievable especially since this is the same Gastrodon that was easily shrugging off everything Iris's Excadrill threw at it. Excadrill even ended up having to use Horn Drill to defeat Gastrodon. And now, Gastrodon is defeated like this? Yeah, no. I'm sorry, this is not acceptable. Especially because Gastrodon has a resistance to rock type moves. So this makeshift rock throw should have done very little damage. They clearly wanted the Pikachu to defeat Gastrodon here so that Ash can finally get a knockout in this battle. And so that Pikachu can start to turn the battle around. But they could not think of a good way to have Pikachu win against the Gastrodon. So Ash's old Pokemon and Tracy rejoice when they see Pikachu defeat Gastrodon. Professor Oak says that now they are getting to see Ash's strengths. Diantha says that type matchups are truly nothing to Ash, which yeah, is the case more often than not. She also says that Ash's rhythm of attacks is wonderful. Leon says that this is his kind of battle. Since he finally got a win, Ash is confident and he says to Pikachu, let's keep this going. Meanwhile, Cynthia says in her mind that Ash and Pikachu are both incredible, because Ash has the will to find opportunity in a crisis, and Pikachu has the skills to seize said opportunity. She then smiles, showing that she is enjoying the battle. After withdrawing Gastrodon, Cynthia says, you fought well, leave the rest to me. Now I don't want to sound mean. But did Gastrodon really fight well when it was taken out by two rocks and a quick attack? I don't think so. Again, I am not trying to be mean. I just hate nonsense like this and any attempts to cover it. So Cynthia then sends out Spiritomb for the third time. Pikachu is immediately on edge when he sees Spiritomb, but Ash reassures Pikachu saying that he has a plan. At Ash's command, Pikachu spins around while using Thunderbolt. Cynthia says that it's too early for a victory dance, and she calls for Hypnosis. However, Pikachu's spinning Thunderbolt repels the Hypnosis. Pikachu then hits Spiritomb with Thunderbolt. Cynthia is shocked by this strategy. Leon comments that it's like they say, offense is the best in defense. Ash says to Cynthia, that was Counter Shield, a move we came up with when we traveled through Sinnoh. Cynthia says that she remembers the Counter Shield and that Ash used it in the Sinnoh League. Ash then exclaims that they are stronger than they were then. It's great to see the Counter Shield return like this after so long, especially because Ash used it against the champion of the region where he devised the move. Better yet, Cynthia remembers the Counter Shield and that Ash used it in the Sinnoh League. 
It's also fitting that Ash uses this strategy with Pikachu and not with one of the other members of the Journeys team, since Pikachu is the only one from the Journeys team that was with Ash back then, and thus he is the only one that actually practiced and learned the Counter Shield. It is also worth mentioning that Ash created the Counter Shield in order to prevent his Pokémon from falling asleep due to hypnosis from Fantina's Pokémon. And now, the Counter Shield returns precisely to keep Pikachu from falling asleep due to hypnosis from a Ghost-type Pokémon. It's great that the Counter Shield was brought back to serve its original purpose, and this makes the callback even better. So Spiritomb tries to use Sucker Punch to stop Pikachu from using Electro Web. However, Pikachu jumps to avoid the Sucker Punch and he traps Spiritomb with Electro Web. Pikachu then goes for an Iron Tail attack on the incapacitated Spiritomb. However, Cynthia says, Spiritomb, please do that. And Spiritomb uses a move. But it is not clear what move this is. Though I did correctly guess what it was in this moment based on the situation. So Pikachu lands the Iron Tail which seemingly finally defeats Spiritomb. However, Cynthia smiles wickedly. Just as everyone celebrates Pikachu's victory, a dark energy erupts from the odd keystone that houses Spiritomb. This dark energy engulfs Pikachu, who is soon given quite a shudder, which is honestly terrifying. Spiritomb is then knocked out for real and Pikachu is knocked out as well while some very ominous music plays, which really sells the shock and the despair of the moment. So it turns out that Spiritomb used Destiny Bond, which allowed it to take Pikachu down with it. Now I do want to mention some fun and curious facts relating to Destiny Bond. The last time that Destiny Bond was used in the anime was back in the episode Shock and Bonds, which is the 128th episode of the Ruby and the Sapphire series. So it has been a while since we last saw this move in the anime. Shock and Bonds was also the first episode in which Destiny Bond was used in the anime, so Destiny Bond has only been used twice in the anime thus far. Additionally, in Shock and Bonds, Destiny Bond was also used by a ghost-type Pokémon belonging to a female trainer that was facing Ash in a 6 on 6 battle, and Destiny Bond took out Ash's third Pokémon leaving Ash with only 3 Pokémon while his opponent still had 4 Pokémon. The episode also ended here. One has to wonder if this is just a coincidence, or are they referencing this earlier battle? It's also worth noting that the only female characters that Ash has faced in a 6 on 6 battle are Cynthia and Katie, which is who Ash faced in Shock and Bonds. So again, one must wonder if this is just a coincidence. I think that it's not a coincidence because there is just way too much in common. I will assume that this was just one huge callback, which is cool. Now I want to point out that since Spiritum was hurt badly after facing Gengar, it's very likely that Cynthia opted to use Spiritum knowing that Pikachu could easily defeat Spiritomb, which would then allow Spiritomb to easily take care of Pikachu, thus leaving Ash with only 3 Pokémon and leaving Ash without his greatest partner. If Cynthia did this intentionally, then she really is ruthless, especially since Pikachu was taken out just when the battle was turning around in Ash's favor. So just when Ash finally gets some traction, his momentum is cut short prematurely and he loses his greatest partner at the same time. Talk about breaking your opponent's will. Ash is left in complete and total despair. Diantha says that Pikachu is Ash's ace, so Ash just suffered an immeasurable loss. Leon says, well now, this is getting interesting, isn't it Ash? Leon is clearly enjoying this battle. So Cynthia withdraws Spiritomb and she says, you truly fought well, get some rest. Yeah, unlike with Gastrodon, this compliment is well earned. And 
It's actually a huge understatement, since Spiritum defeated three opponents. The three Pokemon Ash has lost so far were all taken out by Spiritum. Watch out, Garchomp, there is another ace in town. The episode ends with Cynthia smiling confidently, knowing that she has the advantage both in numbers and in morale, while Ash takes a step back while filled with dread. He says that Cynthia is strong and he likely wonders how he will be able to overcome such a fearsome opponent. So overall, I think that this episode was a disappointment. Now, it's not that the episode was bad, it's just that I expected so, so much more, since this episode marked the beginning of the long-awaited battle between Cynthia and Ash. This battle just has to be amazing and, since they decided to dedicate three episodes to it and they even sacrificed Deontha vs. Leon for it, and they had extra time to work on the episode given all the breaks and the recaps, my expectations were just sky high, and the episode simply did not measure up. I hate that Dragonite and Gengar were both taken out so quickly and without doing much. Dragonite especially only got to use two moves. It was then put to sleep by Hypnosis. It did not wake up and it was defeated while asleep. This is now Dragonite's third loss in a row. They just keep doing Dragonite dirty, which is awful. Gengar was able to do a little more, but it was still taken out way too fast and way too easily. It honestly feels like they just rushed through this first part of the battle since basically half of the battle is over in just one episode. This baffles me since they have three episodes for this battle, so why couldn't they take their time with it? There was no need to rush, and the episode, Dragonite and Gengar suffered for it. Now Pikachu on the other hand was able to shine, however, I think that the way he defeated Gastrodon was just ridiculous. Two thrown rocks plus quick attack and Gastrodon is out? You have to be kidding me. Pikachu vs Spiritomb was better and it was really the only good battle in this episode. The return of the counter shield was cool and fitting, since Ash is facing the champion of the region where he devised the counter shield. And better yet, Cynthia remembered the counter shield and that Ash used it in the Sinnoh League. The counter shield was also used for its original purpose, which makes its return that much more fitting. I am also a huge fan of the way that Pikachu vs Spiritomb ended, since it was just so brutal to see Pikachu and Ash's momentum cut short so suddenly and shockingly, just when things were looking up for them. This was, without a doubt, the perfect and best way to end the episode. The one other compliment that I can give to this episode is that it was very suspenseful, because Cynthia was in control of the battle the entire time. She just had Ash dancing on the palm of her hand since she overwhelmed him with her strategies and constant swapping of Pokemon. Ash was so off his game that he could not battle like he normally does. The despair was palpable throughout the whole episode, especially when Pikachu was defeated. Cynthia truly felt like the imposing and the powerful opponent that she is, and she was just absolutely ruthless. I really love Cynthia in this episode. So yeah, overall the episode was not horrible, it had some nice moments in it, and it is definitely far from the worst episode in this arc, but I strongly believe that it had to be so, so much better which is why I am ultimately disappointed. Hopefully, the next episode will be much better. But that's the video, as always. Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.